So what we have here is the pump head. We've got a cool plate, we've got some tubes, and we've got a radiator. So we're going to apply some thermal paste and then put the cold plate on top of the CPU. Water is then going to circulate coming up to the pump head, cooling our CPU down. Hot water is then going to return to the radiator. We're going to have fans on the radiator, which are going to blow cooler through the radiator, cooling the water down. The cool water is then going to come back to the CPU and repeat that process. Okay, so looking at how we're going to connect all this up. So both of the fans have a standard four pin fan connector coming from them and they both need to end up going into the CPU fan header on the motherboard. Obviously we've got two connectors here, there's one CPU fan header. So they include a standard two to one fan splitter cable. So we're going to plug both of the fans into this adapter and then plug this end into the CPU fan header on the motherboard. So this really is one of the more simple AIOs to install. The only other cables that we have, there's two additional cables coming from the pump. The first is a three pin power connector, and that is going to go into the pump header on the motherboard, which is right beside the CPU fan header. And that's going to power our pump and allow our motherboard to control the speed of the pump. Important to mention, this is a three pin connector, so we're not going to be able to run the pump in PWM mode. We're going to have to run it in DC mode. The only other connector that we have coming from the pump head is a three pin five volt addressable ARGB connector. And we have two options with this connector. We can plug this straight into the addressable ARGB header on our motherboard and our motherboard has one of those. We can then use the Dragon Center software to control the lighting on the pump head. So that's option one. The second option is we can use the supplied controller to control the lighting. And that's the method I'm going to use, so I'll show you that as we set up the AIO. First thing for us to do is to secure these brackets to the pump head, and that's going to allow us to attach the pump to our motherboard. So all we need to do is set the brackets on the top, turn things over, and then we can go ahead and secure things in place. There's one screw needed on each side. Okay, so it's just the same process with the other side. Attaching the bracket over the top, turning things upside down, and then we just need to secure things in place with a screw on each side. Okay, as I mentioned, I'm going to use this controller to control the ARGB on the pump head. So the first thing for us to do is to connect up this little ARGB connector coming from the pump head to the supplied cable. Now importantly, what you'll note is there's a little arrow here on one side of it. You'll notice we've got three pins on the bottom. There's two pins together, a space, and then one pin. Looking at the cable, it's the same pattern. There's two pins, a space, and then another pin. And if we look as well, there's an arrow to help line the five volt pins up. So all we want to do is line up the two five volt pins. Two arrows are lined up and then we're just going to push the cables together. So that's clicked into place. Cooler Master supply a little cover which is going to hold these cables in place and prevent them from coming loose. So we're going to slip this over the top. Next thing for us to do is to connect the other end of this cable up to the controller. The controller is very simply, there's just a button here to press to cycle through the effects. And I'll show you this later on in the video once everything is connected up. So we've got the connection on the side here to plug this into, so I'm going to go ahead and plug this in now. So the only additional thing we'll need to plug in is plug this SATA cable into our SATA cable coming from our power supply. That is going to power the controller, allowing it to work. Next thing for us to do is to get our fans onto the radiator but we need to have a think about which way we're going to put the fans on the radiator. We've already talked about the orientation of the fans when we discussed the case fans. There's a front and a back. We can have the fan either as an intake or an exhaust. Importantly, with an AIO, you will get much better CPU temperatures with the fans as an intake. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have this on the side as an intake. You then have two choices. You can have the fans first and then the radiator, or the radiator first 
and then the fans. What I have found is having the fans first, which shows the outside of the case, and then the radiator next, will give you slightly better temperatures. So that is the fan pushing through the radiator. It's, it's an intake, but it's the fan in a push configuration through the radiator. The alternative is we can also have the fan as an intake, but install the fan behind the radiator in a pull configuration. So it is pulling cool air through the radiator and into the case. Both ways are intake, one is push, one is pull. The advantages, I think, of the push configuration from what I have tested, it's going to give you slightly better temperatures, but because the fan is closer to the outside of the case, it's going to give you slightly more noise. Pull configuration is very slightly less effective, maybe only one or two degrees on maximum CPU temperatures, but it will be a bit quieter. The other factor to factor in is sometimes if you have nice ARGB fans, you'll either want to see them on the outside of the case or the inside of the case, and that's going to determine what you do as well. So I've already sized up both options in the case, and I think what we're going to do is have the radiator first, then the fans behind the radiator in a pull configuration, bringing cool air in from the front of the case. Then the final thing to factor in is where we want the cables coming out from the fans. Importantly, remember the fan cables are going to go to the top of the motherboard towards the CPU fan header. So it makes sense that the cables come out towards the top of the radiator. Okay, so our radiator is gonna go up this way. This is gonna be the front of the case. This is gonna be the inside of the case. As we said, we want the fans pulling air through the radiator. So the front needs to go up against the radiator. And in this orientation, the fan is gonna be going up towards the top of the case. So this is the orientation that we want to have our fans on. Included with the AIO, you've got these longer screws. So we're gonna slide these through the fans and first of all, just hand tighten them. Next, we can very gently tighten each of the screws. We don't want to over tighten them because that's just going to add to the noise if we distort the fans by over tightening them, bending them out of shape. So it's just a very gentle tighten. Okay, final thing for us to do before we go ahead and install this into the case is to plug in the twin fan spitter cable into each of these fans. So it just matter lining things up, they only can go in one way. We now can go on ahead and put on the side bracket from the case. And then again, in the IIO box, we're gonna have shorter screws this time to secure the radiator to the case. Again, it's important we don't over tighten so we don't damage the radiator. First thing for us to do is to apply some thermal paste to the CPU. There's a whole variety of different ways of doing this. My preferred method is just to apply a pea-sized amount to the middle of the CPU. So that looks about right. Before we go ahead and install our pump head onto the CPU, we need to remove the layer of plastic protection. Next, we just need to lower the pump head down and slide the little metal brackets over the black plastic clips on the motherboard. Okay, that's the front one on. And then we'll just get the bottom one at the bottom as well. So that's the bottom one on. Then it's just a matter of tightening things up. I tend to do a few turns of one, then a few turns of the other, and that way you don't over tighten any one side. We can now go ahead and remove the plastic protection from the pump head. The two headers that we're going to need to plug into are just to the right of the RAM at the top of the motherboard. The one closest to the RAM is the CPU fan header, and the one furthest away from the RAM is the pump header. So we're going to need to plug the double fan splitter cable coming from the two fans on our radiator into the CPU fan header. So we'll go ahead and plug that in first of all. So we just line things up with the header, and then we go ahead and push things into place. The next cable to plug in is this three pin cable coming from the pump header. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this into the pump fan header and that's gonna power our pump. Even though it's got three pins and the cable has four pins, there's only three of the pins it will fit onto because there's little notches 
on the cable and little notches on the header. So we'll go ahead and line things up. Okay, so that's those two cables plugged in. Our little um, controller is magnetic, so I think I'm going to bring that out towards the front of the case where we can just take the front panel off to access the controller. We're also going to need to power our controller, so I'm going to go ahead and plug that into one of the spare SATA connectors. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the little ARGB controller out to the front of the case and stick it here using the magnets. Okay, so we just need to line the bracket up. And then we can secure things into place with the two screws we removed at the start. Center of attention, they all want some. I'm like fire, hot as the sun. The dance floor is burning, call 911. 